On the centennial year of Ball State University, the Cardinals open up the football season at Schumann Stadium. And for the first time ever, Central Connecticut State comes to Muncie in what promises to be an exciting week one matchup. Ball State football is back and we take you down to kickoff now on SportsLink Game Day. Two teams on the opposite end of the spectrum inside of the Mid-American Conference meet up in Muncie, Indiana as the 15-5 Ball State Cardinals host the 9-12 Kent State Golden Flashes on ESPN3. Hello everyone, glad to have you with us alongside Preston Husband. I'm Jeremy Matheny. Preston, two teams who picked up a win last night in the MAC. It should be good for their psyche going forward. A big win for Kent State last night. Their first road win on the year for Ball State. Five straight wins now. They did drop a set, which was the first time in 15 sets that they had dropped one. But an incredible start to the season for both of these teams. Ball State looking sharp right now against Kent State. And like you said, Preston, Kent State picks up their first road win of the season at Toledo last night in a really hostile environment. Yeah, Toledo came into Ball State last week and Ball State took care of business in three straight sets. Last night it was Kent State, however, upsetting the Rockets at Toledo in that environment you talked about. A good four set win for them, trying to get some confidence going here tonight. And if Kent State wants to pull off an upset victory tonight in Muncie, they're gonna need the freshman standout, Danny Tyson. Tyson has 152 kills on the year, 13 kills last night, a big reason why the Rockets were taken down by the Golden Flashes in last night's match. As I mentioned, the 14 blocks, very good defensively and nine aces. She's able to get herself going on either side of the court. And on the other side of the net, Ball State pulled off a victory last night in four sets against Ohio in a match that really tested the Cardinals' mental strength. Ellie Dunn was a superstar again last night with 19 kills and 15 digs, but it was the players off the bench, Kaya Holder and also Reese Crawl, that were big for the Ball State Cardinals' success last night and a big reason why they came away with a four-set victory. And if Ball State wants to get another win tonight, they're going to need the consistency that is Amber Seaman. Seaman with 46 assists last night. She's been around that 40 number quite a few times this year. Two straight setters the week awards three on the year already 56 kills and also 28 aces so she does a very nice job getting herself involved offensively seaman with six service aces last night against ohio it's another big matchup in muncie indiana ball state and kent state in mid-american conference play coming up next on espn3 Good evening and welcome courtside with Jaron Matheny. I'm Jack Kaiser. Despite going toe-to-toe -to -toe with UCSB yesterday, Ball State fell in five sets for its fourth straight loss. And Jaron, it does not get any easier for the Cardinals facing a CSUN team tonight that's won three straight and has three top 15 wins. And two teams trending in the opposite direction at the moment. Ball State, we did see some positives last night even though they lost. And on the other hand, CSUN found a way to go on the road and get an impressive victory against Fort Wayne, trailing 2-0 at halftime. They changed from the spin serve to the lob serve in the final three sets, came back from 2-0, found a way to win, and it was quite an impressive victory to go into a hostile environment like Fort Wayne and get that victory. Very impressive indeed. Two sets down, three in a row for CSUN to close it out. And the Bulgarian Dimitar Kalchev led the way with 15 kills against Fort Wayne. He's driven the Matador bus all season. A double-double match last night on the road in Fort Wayne. Kalchev was a member of the 2018 first team in the Big West, and he ranked ninth in kills in CSUN history. He's going to get plenty of touches up front and the Cardinals need to double team him early and often. On the other end of the spectrum, Ball State has a freshman blossoming early in his career. Caleb Jenis comes off a career high 22 kills against UCSB last night. The first ever Division I men's volleyball player out of the state of South Carolina. Jenis showed his dynamic abilities on the outside last night. A lot of potential for the freshman, but he needs to show some more consistency after that great match last night. Ball State head coach Joe Walton describes Jenis as a happy, naive puppy. He's just glad to be contributing right now, while Kalchev has done way more than just contribute over his long career. It's the classic senior versus freshman tonight, and it's all a matter of whether the experience in Kalchev outweighs the potential in Caleb Jenis. And while we have the time, let's introduce you to the third member of our crew, Jaron Matheny. Thanks, Jack. I talked to Coach Whitford earlier this week, and he said today was all about controlling the pace of play. He does not want Indiana State to run up and down the floor like they did in last year's game, and he wants to limit possessions on both sides of the ball. 
And Jack, Coach Whitford wanted to keep him Andre Rickman out of the paint period. He thought Ball State could completely eliminate him from this game if they could keep him out of that five foot area. The last two buckets for Indiana State, Rickman in that close area, grabbing boards and creating opportunities for the Sycamores. Rickman's been impressive. And now Jaron Matheny stands by with our winning coach, James Whitford. Coach, you're tied at, the, at half, 32 all. What did you guys do in the second half to propel yourselves to victory? You know, we just played a little more calm. I thought we had a lot of kind of nervous energy in the first half and, and uh, had some characteristics, that uh, some turnovers that I thought were a little uncharacteristic. What allowed Tajay to be so dynamic today? You know, he was, he was good on offense, but his defense was way better than his offense. One of the best defensive performances I've seen in a long time. I thought he was the difference in the game. He was great. Coach, thanks and congrats. Yeah, thank you. You are looking live inside Schumann Stadium on a steamy October afternoon. Ball State and Northern Illinois are set to play in the second Mid-American Conference game for the Ball State Cardinals. Hello everyone, welcome inside SportsLink Game Day alongside Alex Thomas and Jack Kaiser. I'm Jeremy Matheny and boys, after the performance last week against Kent State, the buzz is back here in Muncie. A lot of excitement after that game. It was the breakout game the Cardinals had been needing. We saw a strong start, kind of a subtly strong start to the season. A couple hiccups along the way, rebounded very well against Kent, and now this is where if the corner is truly going to be turned for this team, it happens today. That game revived the energy around the program. They needed a tone setter to start the Mid-American Conference. Scoring 52 points against Kent State's a pretty good way to do that. And also the defense came to play as well. Ball State will need a similar performance against NIU today. The first time they scored 52 points since 2013 against Miami of Ohio. And the big reason for that, Riley Neal. He was unbelievable. Got it done through the air. Plain and simple. 402 yards on the day. Five total touchdowns. And the biggest thing was that the Ball State offense didn't take shots in the first four weeks. Came out week five against Kent State and on the very first play went deep to Riley Miller and connected. Those two had it going all day. We'll talk more on that later, but it was the offense and the past first offense, I think, that we saw that has been different from weeks past. Five plays of 30 plus yards. They had eight total leading up to last week. So the numbers proved that the explosive plays were there. You said it, Alex. Riley Neal was hitting his receivers down the field over 400 yards, and the defense was outstanding. Three interceptions and five sacks, both of those season highs. And Riley using his legs a little bit too is something we've become accustomed to from Neal, just an overall fantastic performance by the entire Ball State team. He had over 460 total yards, 400 through the air and 60 on the ground, including a touchdown. James Gilbert with 14 carries, 44 yards. Those two touchdowns make the difference in the running game, being a success versus having some things to work on going into the week. And they scored 21 points in the first quarter, as you see there. Touchdowns. When they got into the red zone, they punched it in, something that they weren't doing leading up to that game. And that was the big worry going into Mac play was could they convert inside the red zone? They do it twice with Gilbert, once with Dunner. Everything was just working for Ball State offensively. It really was, and it had to do a little bit too with Riley Neal going to Riley Miller. And that connection that worked all day, you see the 11 catches for 208 yards and a touchdown in the game against Kent State. This is a duo that has been here all season long and we're really starting to take strides now. And they've known each other even longer than that. They grew up in Yorktown together, went to high school, had that connection, and they just carried over, carried it over to the collegiate level, and it's thriving now more than ever. And how about Riley Miller just having those back-to-back -back career games? I mean, a huge game the week before and then going for over 200 yards, it's just an unreal connection these two have. He's simply become Neil's favorite target. He's looking for me, and we, Jack, we've referenced him as a, a possession receiver, and and while he, he lacks a lot of flair that you need at the receiver position, the stuff that Justin Hall does have, but because Justin Hall did so well last year, he's attracting attention from defenses, allowing openings for Riley Miller and Corey Lacanaria. Miller's also a precise route runner. I think that's aided him in getting open Definitely. as well. And for Ball State, that wide receiver group, like you just talked about, it's opened up things for La Canaria because Miller has played so well, and Justin Hall getting all that attention, Ball State just becomes such more, so much more of a dynamic offense. Here's the deal. If you looked at last week, last year's team, who's the most dynamic athlete and playmaker on that team? You'd, it, Justin Hall yeah. would be in the conversation. If it's not him, he's definitely in the, in the discussion. One catch for seven yards last week, and this team put up over 400 yards of offense and, and scored 52 points. That is phenomenal. Not to mention the running game, 160 yards, that's almost 
50 yards below their average. And so that's just kind of what you're seeing is that this offense is developing under head coach Mike New. We saw it take a huge step forward against Kent State, and they could do it again today. But make no mistake, Justin Hall is still the go-to receiver. When it comes down to it, when Ball State's in a tight game, they will try to find Justin Hall. You said he's the, he is the best athlete on the field most of the time. Despite the fact that he's not too big, he can still make dynamic plays down the field. I, I anticipate one of those breakout games from Hall soon. Still leads the team in receptions. I anticipate a big performance in the next coming weeks. And we keep talking about that Ball State offense, but the Ball State defense performing at a high level too against Kent State, and they performed at a high level against those running quarterbacks, which has been something different for the defense as a whole, and then they create th three turnovers to go along with it. It seems that everything that Western Kentucky gave them issues with when they made a quarterback change and were running the ball with their quarterback a lot more. The issues that came with that in the second half of the Western Kentucky game completely evaporated coming into Kent State. It was clearly a focus in practice and you saw this defense protect and cover around the quarterback so he can't scamper and find holes. They were really sounded technical. The defense has really, I mean, in my opinion, had one and a half bad games. They played bad at IU, gave up 38 points. Hoosiers were just clicking on offense. That's a difficult environment to play in. And then they played ha a bad half in the second half against Western Kentucky. They held the Hilltoppers to seven points in the first half. And then last week against a very up-tempo Kent State offense, they did a really good job uh, forcing those turnovers, also getting to the quarterback. So this new defense is developing under David Elson. And, and with the experience that they brought back from last year, they gave up 42 points per game. No signs of that type of defense this season really developing nicely. And that's the first time Ball State has won a Mid-American Conference game since the 2016 season against Buffalo. 1-0 in MAC play for the first time since 2015. The Mid-American Conference, something Ball State has their hopes on this season as well. They had it last season. Things obviously fall apart with injuries, but take back the MAC, still the slogan this season. And if they want to reach those goals, this is a huge game for it. It's terrific to pick up a win in your opener in the Mid-American Conference. That is ideal. That's what you need to do if you want to reach some of these goals of reaching a bowl game and getting to the MAC championship. But tonight, today is a great opportunity. NIU has been the most dominant team in the Mid-American Conference for the last decade. It's plain and simple. Multiple Mid-American Conference championships dominating the MAC West title. They are the perennial power. Offense isn't there necessarily as much this year. A terrific defense but a great chance for Ball State to make another statement week after week here today. The rest of Ball State's schedule is manageable. There is no team that jumps out that says Ball State is going to lose that game. They can compete and have a chance to win in every single game this year. The two toughest games remaining for the Cardinals, in my opinion, on the road at Toledo and at Ohio, two very consistently solid teams in the Mid-American Conference. And you said NIU has been the definition of consistent in this conference year after year. I mean, they had an Orange Bowl appearance against Florida State yeah. a few years back. Uh, this is a great program. As we take a look at the Mid-American Conference today, what's going on inside the MAC? Buffalo, a 17-10 lead on Central Michigan, a team Ball State will see next week. And in Central Michigan, struggling so far, not only through MAC play, but just in this season. Jack mentioned Toledo and Ohio as two other ones to take a look at. Central Michigan, I think, is one that it's easy to put someone as kind of the doorstop of the Mid-American Conference, but that team can also very easily surprise you. A lot of parity in this conference, and you'll see it throughout. Toledo, Ohio, and Northern Illinois, very strong teams, but those that we don't talk about as much are still deadly week in and week out. Buffalo, an extremely strong team, along with Akron. Two opponents that Ball State does not have to see this year that the Cardinals faced last year. So as I said, the schedule is pretty manageable for Ball State. The conference doesn't have that, that, that high-powered team that is clearly the standout like Toledo was last year. Rocket's still strong this season, but Ball State has a really good shot starting with today to pick up a lot of wins. And somebody who knows a lot about the Mid-American Conference is former Ball State football player and SportsLink alum Aaron Hepp, who's now a producer with the Alabama Crimson Tide. We now welcome on Aaron Hepp and Aaron just absolute chills running down my spine <laughs> after seeing those videos. Oh, appreciate it, man. Uh, it's really cool. Had a lot of uh, creative freedom over in Alabama with doing some of these videos. So it's been a, it's a really good opportunity and like being around guys like Colin Sexton and you know being able to make videos like that. It's pretty cool. And that's what I was going to ask. I mean, everyone knows Alabama football. You sure. can't mistake it. Sure. But Alabama basketball, kind of a resurgence here recently. <laughs> that's right. Coach, Avery, Coach Avery's got us going in the right direction. You know, buckle up. That's our little buckle uh, that's up. Our All right. Buckle that's good up. to know. But uh, yeah, it's it's fun. It's a fun group. Um, 
obviously Colin went to the pros, got picked by uh, the Cavs. But yeah. next year we got a lot of people coming back. So, so something with that story, sure. and specific the Sexton one, it's something that he'd been talked about going to the NBA for a long yeah, time. Absolutely. So was that a long-standing idea, or kind of towards the end of the season it came together? It was kind of towards the end of the season, you know, like it was always the thought he's good enough, he's going to go pro, he's yep. going to picked in the top ten, you yep. know what I mean? And then it kind of like, it's almost with how much things we have going. All right, the draft's here. Like we got to do something. So it's kind of like that pedal to the floor. Like let's come up with something cool to do before the draft. So that's kind of what we came up with. So, what's your favorite video you've made so far working for Alabama? Oh, favorite video. That one was fun just because it like it was one of those that gets released at the right time. Like yeah. it gets picked. It goes down social media right after it goes out, and uh, it goes like that. I always think intro videos are pretty rewarding. Like the I made uh, the football intro video the past year. Wow. So. Seeing that play before like a football game is pretty cool um, in front of all those fans and everything. So, the uh, Crimson Tide game day doesn't have anything on the shoe though, right? No, no, no. I mean, I mean, I mean, Brian Denny shoe <laughs> stadium. I mean, they're one the same, you know. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you about it because in your time here, there were times that depth chart wasn't kind to you. Sure. But you were quoted many times talking about that that drive and that continues. So as someone who experienced that struggle, yeah. that, that so many athletes go through, what would you say to somebody like that on this team? Well, I would first off say the depth chart wasn't kind of me because the guys who were playing were better than I was. So <laughs> I would say, I would say, like Corey Lacanario was came in when I was like a, a redshirt junior. Corey comes in as a freshman. It was like he ran two routes, and I was like, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I was like, this is this might not go well after I saw him run routes. And then Riley Miller comes in as like a freshman. I actually host him on his official, and like. He did a lot of things like me, but just a little bit better mm -hmm. and a little bit smoother and everything. And I was like, this guy's probably a little bit better than me, too. So I always say, though, when whenever they make plays, I take some credit for their yards. <laughs> so every Riley Miller catch, I get about 10% of the yardage for on my career stats, is what I said. So, I think that's how it works. Yeah, I think that's how it works, too. What was your favorite memory about playing for this Ball State football team? Oh, man. We beat uh, with Coach New. So I had four years for Coach Limbo and then Coach New yeah. my fifth year. Um, we went to Florida Atlantic, and it was a game there was like, Thunder delays, lightning mm -hmm. delays, all kinds of stuff. And we end up winning that game. It was a crazy game. We scored Kevon Mabe on the sideline to win it. And yep. then we uh, threw Gatorade on Coach New on the sideline. It was just like a really, really cool experience. It's something that I'll like always remember. That's super exciting. And now Coach New, starting to, we're starting to see the corner turn right. here on this program. What have, what have you liked about the Cardinals this year? I mean, Coach New's a guy, and if you go ask anybody on that Ball State sideline, they're like, and I'm not just saying this. They're behind Coach New 100%. Like, no matter what happens, win, lose, they're behind Coach New. And you got Riley Neal, who's awesome kid, you know, and you just see him, like, it's almost like every snap he takes, he's getting better and better and better and better, and we knew that coming in. So it's just super exciting. And seeing some of these young guys, too, like, I mean, obviously James has been there a while, but these young backs coming up, too, it's pretty awesome. And for you off the field, you were part of the sports link group, obviously. And one of the most interesting things you did over your time here was the HEP cam. Uh -oh. Take us through that creative process. Uh -oh. <laughs> the creative process was basically they just gave me a mic and I, went out <laughs> and I just interviewed people. And we had uh, guys like I remember Connor Nichols filmed me one time. Connor Nichols still here. Shout out yeah. Connor if you're if you're watching wherever you are. But he actually filmed me at like the bed races, I think, or something like that. And. I don't know, just having fun, just being myself, and was just going out and talking to people. How did it get started? I think it was like a, a CT, a Chris Taylor idea. <laughs> I can't really, I can't really, uh, really remember exactly how it started, but it, like we tried it once and it kind of worked. And I think we did the first one was at Fan Day or mm -hmm. whatever, and we just kept rolling with it. And, <laughs> and we do have a little bit of footage oh, from the Hef. You didn't think we'd come in <laughs> Canada, huh? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Let's take a look back at the Hef Camp. <laughs> This is Ball State wide receiver Aaron Hep at Fan Jam. Ah. <laughs> and this is the Hep Cam. Get your popcorn ready. Here at the bed races, gonna be an electric, electric day. Everybody's really excited about it. Who's gonna win? I don't know. Who's gonna fall? I do know a lot of people. Well, Jacob and Lucas, can you tell me just how you're feeling in the bounce house? Oh, what the heck do I do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were. Yeah, he was. Starting him young. Get him ready for the bed races young. Little baby. Say, I don't know, six months, four months. Beautiful little thing. 21 years from now, there'll be a cardinal. I'm sure of it. This time, Hepcam's a little different. We have Hepcam Cribs Edition. The first thing I see, why in the world do you have Jack Milas, Scout O Award, Keith Weddings, Offensive Award, Jonathan Newsom's <laughs> Miami Award up there? We're in, a, we're in John Godfrey's room over here. The softest bed in the house. Isn't Am I nice? right? 
Pretty, pretty nice. soft. Charlie, how's Air Jam? It's great. Now, are you going up on stage? Maybe. It's a maybe, folks. Three race, how are you feeling? Nervous? Nervous. She's ready to go, folks. Are you really a Cubs fan or did you just become a Cubs fan like most of the Cubs fans? We're gonna get an oh, in-race interview here. Wow, they're going, they are flying. All their wheels are loose. What's wrong with the wheel? For my last bed races, it was a memorable one. Uh, this has been the Hep Cam. This is Aaron Hep signing off. Have a good day. Goodness. That was that was beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, yeah. I don't need no <laughs> need to. Uh, I think we might need to talk to uh, Nick Saban about uh, Hep Cam Alabama edition. Yeah, yeah. He he'd probably look you right in the eye and say, "Get out of here." Yeah, <laughs> Get I out here that. He seems very about that kind of thing. That's I think right. that that's perfect for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, Aaron, man. thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Hey, you thank you guys for having me on. Go Cards. <laughs> Ball State this season. Aaron played wide receiver, but a lot of the talk this year has been about this running back group, RBU. And what really gets a start for these running backs? It's up front with the offensive line. 